Hi, I'm Doug with Hassan and Wong. What I want to talk to you about today is the scalp stretching exercises. Uh, for FUT or strip surgery, the mobility of the scalp will come into play. When we're trying to get bigger numbers, four and five thousand grafts, then the wider the piece we take, the more grafts we are going to be able to harvest. And in order to take a wider piece to safely close the edges, we need proper mobility. Now, you can't control your density, you can't control the quality of your donor hair as far as the texture. When, one thing you can control is the mobility of your scalp. So I want to talk about how you prepare your scalp for surgery. Um, now we, we always talk about, you know, how is the patient's laxity? Well, to test your laxity or to kind of get a sense, you can move your scalp up and down. Now you can see mine has some decent mobility. Now if your scalp is really tight and you try to do that, it doesn't really move much. So if it doesn't move much, we can only take a small piece, we're not going to get a lot of hair. So for cases like that, we say, okay, do your scalp stretching exercises and we can get the proper amount of hair. So the first exercise would be to do it from the sides. So you want to kind of take the, the heels of your palms and you want to find kind of an area above the ears and you want to be kind of over the ears, maybe slightly back, a little slightly forward. This is too far forward and this is probably too far back. So you want to be somewhere in here. Now, if you have like maybe long fingers and your head's a little bit fine or not very wide, you'll be able to interlock your fingers and you can squeeze and you can pull the scalp up and you can hold it and then you can relax when your arms are tired and do that again. If you find that it's hard to interlock, you can just sit the palms here and then you can go up and down and just hold that and you know the stretch up and the stretch back is going to increase the mobility so you want this upward motion and you can kind of put the elbows in just to, to give yourself a little more leverage but you can reposition and then hold that stretch whatever is more comfortable um, on the sides, you don't really necessarily need your elbows in as much as maybe when you're doing it in the back. So again, lock it into the kind of area here and then maybe stretch it like this and just hold that stretch. Your arms are going to get tired, but you know, hold it for as much as you can and then release. Maybe shake the arms out and then get back at it again. So you can see kind of here, maybe a little bit here, you know, in this range here. So if you're down a little bit lower, that's okay. You can be a little higher, but think of the strip being taken here. And so that's where you want the most mobility. So it's not going to do you any good to be down here. And it's not going to do you any good to be really high because then your hands will kind of slide together and you're not going to grip that area. So that's good for the sides. Now, for the back, you can also check the mobility. Like, I've had, you know, a few strip surgeries, so I'm a little tighter in the back. So when you move my scalp up and down, it doesn't move a great deal. So if I was preparing for a, you know, third surgery, fourth surgery, whatever, and most guys only need one or two, um, I'd want to move the back and get that a little bit more loose. So typically for the back, we interlock the fingers and we will place the hands firmly against the back in the area that we're going to be taking it. And so we want to move the scalp up and down. So in this case, you can hold it at the top. You can hold it down the bottom, but for the back, it might be better to, to do the kind of rocking motion. But if you can hold it in this position, that's actually probably ideal. Hold it in the stretch position. And so that's kind of the way it looks from the back. And then stretch, stretch, maybe 30 seconds, whatever. 
until your arm gets tired, then release, maybe relax, and then do it again. So maybe when you're watching TV at night, you know, get in front of the TV and on the couch and, and do the stretching exercises. So if your scalp is tight, it's gonna take a good couple months to stretch it. You can get it stretched in maybe four to six weeks if, if you really are diligent. You wanna to try to work up to an hour a day. So maybe start off 20 minutes, half hour a day, your arms get tired. You work up to maybe 45 minutes to an hour after maybe a week or two. And the goal is to get as much mobility as possible. So if your scalp is tight, work it hard. If you work up to an hour a day, you're gonna get some mobility. Um, that might seem like a lot, but even if you do a half hour a day and you do it diligently, over time you're gonna have some mobility. If you're preparing for a procedure that's several months out, no such thing as too early or too loose of a scalp. Start stretching right away. Um, if your surgery is looming around the corner, well, stretch anyway. It's likely that you've got enough mobility to at least have something in the three to 4,000 graph range. But if you're a stage six and you don't have hardly any hair up top, but you've got really good donor hair and you wanna you know, go for it, then you're gonna need five, 6,000 plus and you're gonna need to have mobility. So uh, hopefully that gives you an idea.